In this video, we'll take a look at the quotient rule, which we'll just go ahead and state it and then look at a couple of examples and then apply it to a real world situation. So quotient rule says, if you have um, a ratio or a quotient of two functions, a ratio of two functions, and generically we'll just call those, uh, let's say f of x divided by g of x. So we have one function on top of another function. There's no constraints on this. Uh, f of x could be a constant, and then we could call that just a constant function. It could be an exponential, it could be a linear. The same thing applies with g of x. Quadratic, it could be anything. If you have a ratio of two functions, whatever they might be, uh, you, can, um, you have a quotient. Um, now again, there are some misconceptions. Um, one would think that, let's call this h of x, to give this uh, ratio a name. One would think that the derivative of h of x would be the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. Unfortunately, it's not that simple once again. Um, without going into too much detail and proving this, we'll just go ahead and state it this time. So the derivative of h, prime, of, h of x, which we're calling h prime of x, is f prime of x times g prime or g of x, uh, and then over here f of x times g prime of x. Now the, the reason I'm not putting a sign in between here is I want you to notice that this looks just like the product rule, except that instead of being f prime g plus f g prime, it's going to be f prime g minus f g prime. And yes, in fact, it does have to have a denominator as well. And in this case, the denominator is going to be g of x squared. Uh, this can be written a couple of different ways. Typically, we put brackets around it to say that this whole function is multiplied by itself. And this is really pretty straightforward to apply as long as you, you do this, uh, you, you, you create a pattern out of this. So let's take a look at an example. Example one. Um, uh, let h of x equal um, x squared over um, x plus 1, or uh, 3x plus 1. Find h prime of x. OK, so the first thing we do is the quotient rule is a little bit uh, pretty quick to apply because you already know what f and g are. f is the top, g is the bottom. Um, and so we'll call this guy, we'll call that f. And again, I'm just going to use f and g instead of f of x, g of x, just because it uh, creates too much notation. So there's f, there's g. Now I know according to the formula, I'm going to need f prime and g prime. So I'm going to find those first before I go plugging anything in. f prime is equal to 2x. That's the derivative of x squared. g prime is the derivative of 3x plus 1, which is just 3. So now according to my derivative, uh, formula, h prime of x will be f prime g, f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. See, that's also the advantage here. Not many parentheses or brackets when you write it this way. So now I just need to copy things down. f prime is 2x, g is 3x plus 1, minus f, which is x squared, um, times g prime, which is 3, all divided by the square of g. Well, that's g is 3x plus 1, and it's that thing squared. That's the derivative. Um, technically, it could be simplified, reduced, all that stuff, but we don't really need it to be, so we'll just leave it the way it is. Let's take a look at another example. Um, let's suppose that um, we'll do the same thing here. So, same same as example one instructions in some it's really hard to write with this thing um, instructions and we'll say that h of x equals um, I don't know three times two to the x over uh, four log um, ten of Okay, so the well, first thing we do is quickly identify our f, identify our g, and um, we're going to need f prime and g prime, so we're going to find our derivatives of these guys. I'll do these off to the side. Um, so f prime, and if 
find that f prime. Well, I, I identify this as a exponential function, so I've got to apply my exponential rule, which, which says the derivative of the exponent, which is just 1, times the natural log of the base, which is 2, times a times b to the u power. Um, I can make that a little more crisp if I want. I can call that 3ln2 times 2 to the x. And g prime is going to be the derivative of a log function, which uh, the derivative of log is, recall, that's going to be um, a u prime over u ln b. So my a is my coefficient. That's 4. u prime is the derivative of this guy here, derivative of x is 1. Um, oops, that's, that's it on top. Divided by u, which is, in this case, just my independent variable x, times the natural log of b. So that's uh, my b is 10 in this case. Um, times, uh, oh, that's it, excuse me. I cut that off there. So we're done. That's our derivative of g prime. Of course, I, I do want to simplify this just a little bit. I'll just write 4 over x ln 10. And the reason I do that is just so I don't have to write so much, because the, the quotient rule is obviously a big, long, messy thing. So here's my f prime. Here's my g prime. And I know where to go with this. I will just do um, h prime equals f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So my f prime, backing up, is. Um, 3 ln 2 times 2x, 2 to the x, so equals 3 ln 2, I'll put that in parentheses, times 2 to the x, g, what's, so what's g? g is uh, 4 log 10 of x, so times 4 log base 10 of x, minus my f which is 3 times 2 to the x times, uh, and you can put parentheses around these functions if you want, so that you know what f prime and g are. And there's f n times g prime. So g prime is um, 4 over x ln 10. 4 over x ln 10. And that's all over g squared. Well, g is. Um, this guy here, 4 log base 10 of x quantity squared. Now, that looks absolutely horrifying. And of course, doing any calculations with this is probably about the most intense this will become. So if I want to find the instantaneous rate of change at a particular input value, then yes, it requires a little bit of work to plug stuff in. Um, but we won't actually be solving any equations. Like obviously, if I wanted to know uh, what is, when is the rate of change equal to, let's say, 5? Well, that's going to be really, really hard to solve for x. Um, in fact, we probably wouldn't be able to solve this equation with any known method. Let's just do one more just to kind of uh, have the, settle the dust a little bit. So let's say example 3, we have uh, h equals, uh, let's say, 4x squared minus 3x over the natural log of uh, 4x squared. So there's my f. There's my g. And um, so my f prime, which I will need, is 8x minus 3. And my g prime, well, this is a log function. Now recall, this is ln really means log base e of 4x squared. There's a coefficient of 1 here because I will need to identify a. There's my b. And this now is my u. So g prime is, um, recall, it's u prime times natural log of b times a times b to the u. So u prime, the derivative of 4x squared, is not just 1 now. It's actually 8x times the natural log of b, which is the natural log of uh, the natural uh, base of e, so that's going to be equal to 1, times my a, which is 1, times my b, which is e. Uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. We totally did this. Uh, we totally did this backwards. This is a log function, not an exponential function. I treated this as an exponential, so I really apologize for that. Um, but you just love that, don't you? Um, so I probably won't edit this out because that'll take too much time. But um, um, so recall that the derivative of a log function is a u prime over u ln b. Okay, so in this case, my a is one. My u prime is uh, 8x. That's going to be over u, 4x squared, times the natural log of b, which is the natural log of e in this case. I'm going to simplify that a little bit. Uh, I'll leave it as 8x over 4x squared. Natural log of e is 1. And additionally, uh, I don't know, I just like to reduce this a little bit more. Um, 8 and 4, those can be reduced to 2 on top, 1 on the bottom. Um, can cancel out an x here, can cancel out one of the x's here. So basically this thing just boils down to 2 over x. So pretty complicated thing to start off with, but pretty simple if you do. You don't have to reduce it. It's going to require it's going to require a little bit less writing of you in the end um, to just do it this way. Um, so now I'm going to express h prime is equal to f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. And that boils down to f prime, which is um, what we figured out, 8x minus 3 times g, which uh, g is the original g, natural log of 4x squared. minus f, which is my original numerator. Um, that's going to be 4x squared minus 3x times the uh, g prime, which we, uh, good thing we reduced it to 2 over x. So that's going to be 2 over x. All over g squared, which is the natural log of 4x squared quantity squared. Again, it looks really, really nasty, but you don't have to worry about it. There's nothing to really uh, fear here because it, it is what it is. Now, one common thing is to say, can I cancel out the g's? The answer is no, because the g is not a common uh, factor in both of these two terms here. Let's take a look at, uh, to wrap things up, let's take a look at a real-world application of this. Why might this be relevant? Um, so for a while, Verizon was selling the iPhone 4 for $199 with a minimum two-year commitment contract from its subscribers. Let's assume that a particular Verizon store gains an immediate profit of $20 from each iPhone it, iPhone it sells. However, the cost of the store in employee pay is about $650 per iPhone. Okay, so um, uh, we have we have a profit function, or we can write a profit function. Uh, uh, so the first thing we want to do is write a profit function, that, a function that gives the profit as a function of the number of iPhones sold. Okay, so I know, I, and I can, I can draw myself a little example here if I need to. I can say, okay, let, uh, let x equal number of iPhones sold then I know that my profit is going to be, uh, I'm going to get $20 for every iPhone I sell, so 20 times x. But then I have to take away um, from that, that's just the profit on the iPhone that I, that I gain, I'm going to end up, it's going to end up costing me $650 per iPhone that I sell because maybe it just takes that much effort to sell an iPhone. Um, And um, then we also have stated that there's a overhead cost of um, twenty dollars, or excuse me, yeah, twenty dollars. Basically, uh, it is a function of the number of, uh, excuse me, as a function of that happening in one day. So the profit in one day is given by twenty times the number of phones sold minus the cost to uh, have an employee sell those iPhones. Uh, minus a twenty dollar uh, overhead expense, whatever that might be for. Okay, so my profit function in this case would be I can combine like terms. Twenty x minus six fifty x is going to be thirteen fifty x. So that's pure profit on those phones. But then minus the overhead of twenty dollars. 
So there's my answer to number one. In number two, we want to write a function that gives the average profit as a function of the number of iPhones sold. Okay, well again, I can make myself a table. I know that the profit I get and then the average profit I get are going to be related to one another. So profit, I know that if I sell, for example, um, one iPhone or 10 iPhones, then my profit is going to be 1350 times 10, which is 135 minus 20 is going to be $115. But my average profit, now this is my total, my average profit is uh, uh, going to be 115 divided by 10 because that's the total I earned, but per phone sold, I only earned 1150. Well, what if I sold 100 phones? Well, that's going to be 1350 times 100, which is going to be 1350. 1,350 minus 20 is 1,330. And um, now I'm going to find the average. Well, it's going to be my total divided by the number sold. And that's going to be, uh, in this case, $13.30. So my average profit goes up a little bit. Now, how do we find that? What is the average profit? Well, the average profit is taking the actual profit and dividing it by the number of phones sold, which in general is going to be x. So if I sold x, I'd have a profit of p, and uh, my average profit would be p divided by x, just like we did here. So what is my profit? Well, my profit function is given to me by 20x minus 20, uh, excuse me, not 20x. Uh, 1350x minus 20, but I have to divide out the number of phones sold, so that's over x. Ah, all right, so there's our average profit, and you can see that it's a, qu a ratio of two separate functions. And now, finally, we want to know, after the store sells 20 phones, at what rate is its profit increasing? Um, its average profit increasing, excuse me. Um, well, we want to find, basically, the prime of the average profit function when x is equal to um, 20 because we want to know what's happening instantaneously to our average profit after 20 phones have been sold. Is it on the rise? Is it on the drop? Uh, what's happening to our average profit if we were to increase the number of phones we're selling by 1? So first of all, we need a p, a p prime. But uh, before we get AP prime, we have to address the fact that we have a quotient, 13.5x minus 20 over x. Okay, so uh, I know this. I see that this is a quotient, so I'm going to call this f. I'm going to call this g, just like we have been in the previous examples. F prime is equal to well, that's a linear function, so its derivative is 13.5. The derivative of g is equal to one. And now I know that this is going to be f prime g minus f g prime over g squared in order to get the derivative function. So I'm going to find those pieces, 13.5 times g. My g is x. My f prime is 13.5 minus my f function, which is 13.5x uh, minus 20 times my g prime, which is just 1, all over g squared, which is x squared. So there's my average profit function. Now in this case, you don't really have to simplify it, but you can probably see that if you do, you can, you can save a little bit of time. Um, so on top, notice I have 13.5x minus 13.5x. Those will cancel out. Negative negative 20 is positive 20. So I'll end up with a function that's going to be 20 over x squared. But so be it. If you want to plug this whole thing into your calculator, not a big deal. So I have 13.5. Uh, what I want is AP prime of 20. So I'm going to plug in 20 into this equation. 13.5 times 20 minus, parenthesis, 13.5 times 20 minus 20, close parenthesis, um, times 1. I don't really need to write that out, but I need to close this parenthesis here for the numerator, divided by um, 20 squared. And what do I get? I get 0 0.05.
Now, what are the units for this guy? Well, the average profit function outputs what? It outputs dollars per unit, or dollars per phone. Um, X is the number of units. So that means that this must be dollars per unit um, over the number of units sold. So what does this say? This says when selling 20 iPhones, the company's average profit which is measured in dollars per unit uh, is increasing by point zero five uh, dollars per additional unit sold so what it, so that basically means that if I sell one more phone then overall it appears that my average profit has gone up by point oh five uh, $0.05 or $0.05. Cents. So not by very much, but it does basically make each phone bring in a little bit more profit on um, on the whole level. And this would be a, a, a pretty reasonable application of how we would use the quotient rule. So that's it. Uh, check out the homework for this section, and uh, we will see you guys uh, next week.